WSTKS FM Worldwide, digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. Hello, everyone. Professor Schwartz here once again in the WSTKS FM Worldwide Studios with a mug of reheated coffee and Onyx the cat hanging around somewhere like all good cats do. It's time yet again for another podcast to assist you in your digital collaborative learning for the 21st century. Let's start today with a quick review of what digital collaborative learning is, the advantages of the approach, and finish by looking at how your student learning team can foster its own digital collaborative learning practices. According to the Georgia Governor's Office of Student Achievement, digital learning is, quote, learning facilitated by technology that gives students some element of control over time, place, path, or pace. In addition, digital learning can be thought of as any type of learning that is accompanied by technology or by instructional practice that makes effective use of technology. Collaborative learning Barbara Lee Smith and Jean T. McGregor tell us in their 1992 article, What is Collaborative Learning?, is an umbrella term for a variety of educational practices and approaches involving joint intellectual effort by students. Collaborative learning activities vary widely, but most center on students' explanation, exploration, or application of the course material not simply the teacher's presentation of it. Digital collaborative learning is a combination of these two approaches. Here, students work together using an array of online tools to explore and analyze course materials, in the process expanding their knowledge of course subject matter, themselves, and how to work effectively as part of a team. Significantly, student learning teams also use the digital medium to create and share new knowledge and perspectives about facts, figures, and other information they have examined as part of a unit, curriculum, or course. The approach facilitates a different kind of learning experience in which students can interact, contribute to each other's knowledge, and take ownership of their learning. A key advantage of the digital collaborative learning approach is that the activity can be carried out either off or online, synchronously or asynchronously. The approach allows students to learn from the ideas, skill sets, and experiences of each other by engaging in a variety of shared tasks, from discussion of course materials to the development of larger projects. Students also have opportunity to cultivate numerous skills such as critical thinking, group analysis, and teamwork. Even students unable to attend an online meeting in real time with the rest of their team can take part in digital collaborative learning thanks to chats, online forums, message boards, and various collaborative apps that don't rely on real-time interaction. Routine digital collaborative interaction with the members of your student learning team facilitates active learning, shared knowledge, and promotes social interaction within a close-knit, supportive cohort. Successfully executed digital collaborative learning allows a student team to develop a feeling of community, providing its learners with active roles, responsibilities, and a sense of ownership of their work. These collaborative activities also help train learners for the 21st century, as I have mentioned in previous podcasts, though the point bears repeating. Another advantage of digital collaborative learning is that it enables students to respond easily to each other's questions, participate in an ongoing way, and offer peer feedback in support of information, sharing new ideas, and emerging perspectives. Students are actively engaged in accountable and responsible dialogues about their developing assignments and projects. 
Such discussions between team members promote logical connections and reasonable conclusions about new knowledge. The use of digital technology in collaboration means that a student learning team can more conveniently ask questions of each other, offer their opinions to each other, and express concerns within a supportive setting. Teammates have the ability to interact with peers that they wouldn't have known otherwise. Technology enables team members to move beyond geographical limitations and offers greater potential for lively online discussions that feature different perspectives, facilitating greater exposure to different points of view in the process. Digital collaborative learning, then, encourages students to be more open to and respectful of the opinions of others in an inclusive way. On a related note, one of the most significant advantages, excuse me, <laughs> of digital collaborative learning is that the approach allows students to self-assess more easily, identify areas for improvement in their work, and bridge performance gaps. Many students are more inclined to share their honest opinions and insights with their peers before expressing concerns to their instructors. As a result, student learning teams can identify and address problem areas in their work before completing it and submitting it for a grade. Keep in mind, digital collaborative learning provides solid practice for life in the real world after graduation, where there is a very good chance you will be working as part of a team of some kind. While team members might be in the same office, it is increasingly likely that some members, who may come from different cultural and educational systems and have very different ways of viewing the world around us, might be in other locations on the globe. Now, you might be thinking at this point, terrific, Professor Schwartz, but how can we do this? How can our team begin and maintain the process of digital collaborative learning successfully? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here is what I suggest to get the ball rolling and keep things on track with digital collaborative learning. First, communicate routinely with your team. Resist the temptation to tune out for a week or two because you are, quote, really busy, end quote. Here's a small tip. We are all busy, and that is a hallmark of adult life. It won't go away after graduation. So you want to make a point now to avoid sporadic communication with your student learning team and cultivate the habit of communicating throughout your work together this semester. Don't treat it as an afterthought. Members who avoid communication with the rest of their team inconvenience everyone else and create unnecessary stress. Don't be that person. Instead, communication between student learning team members should be routine, open, and ongoing, whether it involves your collaborative work for a given class meeting, a particular week, or a special team project. Second, Coordinate team activities carefully. For everything to run within a student learning team, to run smoothly within a student learning team, that is, it's vital that all of you coordinate your activities for each week of the course, whether you are meeting face-to-face -face or online. Effective coordination of your team activities and efforts hinges on the aforementioned communication. The two are connected, in other words. Plan all team activities in a careful, organized, and transparent, ways, transparent way without waiting until the last possible minute. Third, collaborate effectively. Whatever course material your team has examined, whatever your ideas about it might be, and however you develop that into the creation of new knowledge, your student learning team needs to work together effectively. Collaborative learning means that your team members foster an ongoing democratic process of idea development and knowledge creation in close concert with one another. There is ongoing dialogue and mutual support throughout a particular assignment or development of a major project, plus routine team self-assessment, revision, time management, problem solving, and, importantly, 
the direct involvement of all team members. Last, be consistent in your course and related team activities. Most important, your student learning team and its component members need to be consistent in your individual and related collaborative efforts each week. A lackadaisical, non-committal approach from any member of the team will not put your team on the road to success in the course. The key to a good start and a solid performance within a digital collaborative learning context, then, is through communication, coordination, collaboration, and consistency, both as individuals and as members of your student learning team. And that brings us to the end of today's podcast on Digital Collaborative Learning Revisited, the advantages of the approach, and how your student learning team can ensure effective practices in its own digital collaboration. Time now to wrap things up until we meet again. Thanks, everyone, for joining me this time and every time. I'll see you in class, online, or during Zoom office hours if you drop by with a question. Have a safe and productive week in the meantime. With special regards <laughs> from Onyx, the cat what am. So long, everyone. You've just heard a podcast from WSTKS FM Worldwide, Digital Collaborative Learning for the 21st Century.